Okay, so my parents, they have a swimming pool in their backyard, all right? It's an in-ground pool. Thank you very much. No, I know people hear the accent and they go like, well, that's above ground 100%. No. In-ground pool. In-ground. Dug a hole, put it in the ground. It had a deep end, had a shallow end. The kind with the lining in it, right? Well, one day that lining got ripped at the very bottom of the deep end. And he had to fix it himself. <laughs> Which was fine, but he, you know, he could have easily let all the water drain out first. But that would have been simple, safe, and efficient. He's like, I ain't got time for that horse <laughs> I ain't doing that. That's going to take all day long. I ain't doing that. So he goes out and he buys an underwater repair kit. They have those. And he gets a backpack. And he fills the backpack full of rocks. (laughs) Yes. That's right. To hold him down. (laughs) On purpose. In the deep end. Under the water. (laughs) I guess that way he could get down there and work on it without floating up every five seconds. (laughs) You know, to where there's oxygen and And then he uses a garden hose to breathe through. I wish I was making this up. Me and my brother, our job was to stand there at the top and just hold the hose for him. I wish y'all could have seen this. I wish I had a tape of this. It's awesome because, like, I'll never forget, uh, he's hanging on the side of the pool in the deep end. He's got a sack of rocks on his back. And there's duct tape everywhere. I mean, he's sealed. It was before Flex Seal came out. And he's got like a hose coming out of his mouth. And he's looking. <laughs> he got a little bit nervous. Like right before he went underwater, he got a little bit nervous. I think he started thinking... Well, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> and he gave us this last minute little speech. It's like his last will and testament or something. He goes, Jonathan, Jason, I need y'all, both y'all to be, hey, Jonathan, come here, sir, sir. shut up and listen to me. This is important, this is important. Listen, if you two boys, if you feel your daddy tugging on the hose, okay, that means abort mission. And now it's time to pull Daddy back up. So now you got to imagine these two little kids. I'm talking eight and nine years old. Just standing there with this hose. Just in charge of Daddy's life. (laughs) And all we're thinking is like, wow, Daddy's smart as hell. I mean, we didn't know anything. We're stupid kids. He goes underwater, he's down there maybe 10 seconds. I'll give him 10 seconds. And of course, the water pressure starts to collapse the hose. Yeah, he didn't think of that. (laughs) And now he can't breathe. So he starts to tuck it on. And me and my brother, we were ready, but we panicked. And, and, and we just yanked it as hard and as fast and in under one second all of it is out you cannot get a hose to go back down to nine feet not without something anchoring it I want you to try that one day because we tried to help him man you get a foot down that thing will snake up on you every time hang on daddy Oh, help is on the way! It's still here! So he's underwater freaking out because he sees that happening. And now he can't get the backpack off. It's too tight. It's too much duct tape everywhere. He's ripping off chest hair underwater. Me and my brother were like, Daddy's waving. We didn't know what to do. 
Finally, he decides the only way out of this problem is he's got to make a run for it <laughs> to the shallow end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the slope. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody try to sprint underwater with a sack of rocks duct taped to their back. It is good <laughs> He was hauling ass. <laughs> hauling ass. Going nowhere. But hauling ass. Too slippery. He'd get about halfway up that slope and he'd hit a patch of algae and go back down. <laughs> we didn't think he was going to make it. But he made it somehow, thank God. All the way up to the shallow end of that pool. And we just watched it happen. That whole thing was we were just looking at him. <laughs> we was rooting for him. Like, Come on, Daddy! But the whole time he's running up that slope, like he's looking at us. And he is pissed off. Like his mouth moving. And, and like he just walked up out of that water. Have you ever seen anybody? You ever seen anybody come up out of water? with their eyes already open. That's creepy, huh? That's apocalypse now kind of sh yeah, Most people go, Bleh. that day my dad was like, release your ass over here! Both of you! Jesus Christ! Jesus! Oh my God! Oh the mighty! Oh the mighty! Ooh! 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 What the hell? Then you two idiots. Do you not see your daddy down there? Waving for help. We're just like, we're still just waving. What's an idiot? You know what I feel like doing tonight? I like doing karaoke. You guys do that around here? You got a place that does karaoke? <laughs> you got to get into that. Ah. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, I love it for two reasons. One, I actually like it when someone does well, you know. I go, oh, that's pretty cool. I bet that person feels good about themselves. That's pretty good. Also pleasant for my ear holes as well. This is a win-win. I don't hate that human being one bit. But I also love it when the wheels fall off. Especially if they're cocky about it. <laughs> Saw this happen one time. This dude walked into a karaoke place, had his own CD in his hand. Yeah, that's a bold move. Yeah, no cover, just the disc. <laughs> he walked up to the DJ. He's like, hey, buddy, why don't you play track seven in about five minutes? <laughs> and me and my friends were watching that. We're like, who is this asshole? Couldn't wait for that dude to get up there. Here he comes about five minutes later. We're just glued to the stage. We're like, here he comes, here he comes. What's he going to sing? Dude gets up there. He's very serious about it. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> you spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record player round and round, round. Oh my God! He sucks. There is a God. It was so satisfying to see this dude eat shit. 
It made me so happy. It was instant karma. I like doing uh, one-hit wonders from the 80s. I like doing songs that people forget they like until they hear them again. It's a very specific group of songs, right? A lot of 80s songs were played out. You've got to find that one diamond in the rough. So my first song, right out the gate, we're going to rock down to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take it higher. Whoa, we're going to rock down to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take it higher. Whoa, out in the streets. Remember that part? That out in the plain. I just like that weird motorcycle noise in that song. I just do that for 10 minutes. I don't even do the song. Like I switch gears. <laughs> now, that's my first song. Now, if they let me back up there. That's 50-50. If they let me back up there, my next song. And by the way, maybe you see me at a karaoke place, right? You hear the accent, and you see the ginger beard, and you think to yourself, he's going to sing Willie Damn Nelson. <laughs> it's a good guess. I happen to like Willie Damn Nelson. But I think it's too obvious. I like to mess with people. I like to throw people off the scent. So my next song, and when I do this, I'll look at one table the whole time I sing it. And I have like a weird smile like that. And I'll sing the whole song for this one, just for the last line at the very end of the song. And it's George Michael's father figure. <laughs> just, just for that last line where he goes, I'll be your daddy. <laughs> Till the end of time. <laughs> see, see, it's a little creepy. But, but they don't forget me. <laughs> That's not my go-to song. Obviously. Don't be ridiculous, yet, could feel. It's not my go-to song. My go-to song. Ready? <clears throat> I got a little change in my pocket going jing-a-lang-a-lang. I want to call you on the telephone, baby. Give you a ring. But each time we talk, I get the same old thing. Always oh, no huggy, no kissy until I get a wedding ring. My honey, my baby, don't put my love upon no shell. She said, don't have me no line. I knew you know it. I knew it the whole time. That's how you find people from Moxville, actually. <laughs> That's, that's how you find them, see. Let's say you're out in public and you got one of your Moxville friends hanging out and they break loose from the group and you can't find them. It's easy. You just post up in the middle of the street and you go, No, hug it, no, cause it. No, hug it, no, cause it. Becky, let's go. always Becky. <laughs> I don't want you guys to think I'm a total wussy, though. I've done some manly stuff in my time. I did one manly thing one time. This is going to sound like I'm bragging, but hey, facts is facts. This, this happened. I broke a dude's arm while I was arm wrestling him. It's the manliest stuff I've ever done in my life. I felt like King Kong. <laughs> It was crazy. So I was in college. I had a buddy named Jason, all right? And our thing was we would go out at night, and we'd go to bars, and we would fake arm wrestle just to get attention from girls. We, had, we pre-planned the whole thing. Sometimes I would win. Sometimes he'd win. It was all fake. But it works, by the way. I'm telling you, if you see two average-sized dudes doing this for a long time at a bar, you can't ignore that. <laughs> People slowly walk in like, what are they doing? What is this? Before you know it, there's a whole bunch of people going, go, go, go. They're <laughs> making bets, and we faked the whole thing all summer. Had a b whole bunch of brand new friends. And at the end of the year, I said, we had a big party. 
I said, Jason, I think we should be honest and tell everybody the truth. Let's just, you know, tell them we're just faking this whole thing the whole time. He goes, ooh, well, okay, well, if we do that, maybe we should arm wrestle for real. And see who would actually win. I go, ooh, okay. All right, well. <laughs> well, if we do that, maybe we should go left-handed, yeah, so it's not personal. He's like, okay, well, if we do that, let's do this. Let's go two out of three. I go, I like it. How about this? Each round, we get a song to arm wrestle to. First round, you get a song. Second round, I get a song. If it goes to three, no song. (laughs) He's like, how long have you been thinking about this? (laughs) So here we go. We're arm wrestling. Everyone's in on it. He goes first. His song, Metallica. Darkness imprisoning me. Foul. I was like, damn. I'm pretty good there, Jason. Thought you said you was right-handed. Okay, it's my turn now. My song, <laughs> Xanadu, Olivia Newton-John. Fah! <laughs> he didn't see that coming. He's like, what is that horse shit? <laughs> I said, it ain't horse shit. She's an angel. You take it back. <laughs> now it's round three. No song. And we're, we're a little pissy at each other. It's like, it's, a, it's like a stalemate for a minute. We're going like this, you know, I'm getting really tired. And all of a sudden, come walking into the party, uninvited, by the way, my ex-girlfriend comes walking in. Yeah, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was like, what the hell's Candace doing here? I didn't invite Candace. I can't lose in front of Candace. I will not lose in front of Candace. So you know what I did? You know that movie? What's it where you uh, turn the, the over-the-top thing? Remember that movie, Over the Top? I did that move. I didn't have a hat on. I just did that with my hand. <laughs> and I grabbed his hand real fast. I did that ostrich claw over the top. <laughs> did like that right there. <laughs> I didn't do any of that, actually. <laughs> but what I did do was cheating. I did this move where you just move your whole body like that. You know, it's like leverage. So I just kind of leaned in. Now it's over. And I got it. It's almost over. And then out of nowhere, you just hear, Fire! It's, it's that loud. And it echoed around the room. So you couldn't tell where the sound came from. Everyone turned away and went like, what was that noise? And we all turned back and Jason goes, it's broke, boys. <laughs> I broke it right there. It was, like a, it was like a twist break. Right there. I said, Candace, I did that to that man. I still love you, Candace. <laughs> I felt so bad for Jason, though. I felt the, he had to wear a cast that went all the way from here to here the whole summer. Like so, his whole summer he had to walk around like that. I felt bad. I'd be right behind him. He's taking a left. <laughs> this is my impression of every professional football referee. Okay. What's that? 27. Yeah, 27. Okay. Got him. Wake double. Seven. Be a yard. Lee. Distance, go. Back. Ah! Now, what if it wasn't the microphone? <laughs> what if that guy really talked like that? <laughs> like, hey, Bob, what about that call you made in the third quarter? Man, come see him. <laughs> and then he goes home to his wife. Hey, honey, how was your day? All right, bad gang. Oh, shit. <laughs> and maybe they're in bed making love. <laughs> oh, honey, eat much. <laughs> To me, <laughs> a 
Oh, thank you, I think about Stop! Is that a little too close for you guys? I gotta tell you the truth, though, my, my favorite thing about football is the cheerleaders. Are there any cheerleaders in here? Good, let's talk about them. I was watching this. Uh, I was watching this ESPN uh, cheerleading competition the other day. And here's my question. Okay, when did cheerleading become such a serious sport? I mean, cheerleaders are some of the best-looking girls in the world, but they can make some ugly faces. Me, <laughs> aggressive. Me, me, aggressive. Cheers if every word or move they make will actually determine the outcome of the game. You know, if they don't do the right cheer at the right time, their team could fall flat on its face. Then only one thing could help. That's all right, that's okay. Shake it up! Shake it up! You know, I think they're just as serious as any team that's ever been in the Super Bowl. Hell, they probably get their own halftime speeches. Would you like to see that? Children coach comes in at the half all pissed off because the team's losing. <laughs> it's the cheerleader's fault. Yeah, she comes in there kicking stuff. Good money, I cannot believe. I can't believe what is going on out there. You girls are getting slaughtered and you act like you don't even care. <laughs> We can't do our Russians. We can't do our basket tosses. Hell, little Jenny can't even give a silent spirit. Well, I know one thing. There's going to be some big changes in here Monday. So you girls don't get your butts in gear. Jenny, <laughs> now let's get back out there and cheer like I know we can cheer. All right, well, bring it in here. Our Father, heart and how did I get <laughs> strong, bulky fellas. You gotta ask yourself, why would someone that big want to act like such a wussy? <laughs> Is he gay? No. Yeah. Well, if he's gay, he's stupid. I mean, think about it, because he's got a job where his hand is up a girl's skirt the whole time. <laughs> This part. <laughs> That's gonna make him miserable. But if he's straight, he's a genius. <laughs> now think about it, because he's doing what we all wish we could do. He's doing it on a regular basis. Me hoes! <laughs> Me hold and envy me! <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I got one hand in my pocket and the other one's full of butt cheek. <laughs> Lucky bastards. <laughs> hey, you gotta, you gotta keep in shape if you're a cheerleader, man. You guys keep in shape and get healthy? Like to exercise, do you? <laughs> I like to exercise, but I think there are some like serious variations of exercise that need to be outlawed. 
You know, like speed walking. <laughs> Is it possible to look more retarded than speed walking? <laughs> Excuse me. next underwater hammer toss <laughs> blindfolded boxing uh, tennis for people with tiny arms time I was here, and the, the weirdest laughs, right? Like, I love a good laugh. Like, I love a good <laughs> like that. <laughs> to me, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. Like, if you're at a nice restaurant, and you ate the chef's food, and you went Pruh! that's a compliment. So when I hear I go, hell yeah, I'm killing right now. Dude's got sleep apnea, anything I'm hilarious. That did a CPAP. <laughs> so I like a good, right? <laughs> but one time, uh, I don't remember what this was, but there were two people that were sitting next to each other, and they both had these weird ass laughs. Like the girl had what I call a machine gun laugh, and she laughed like this. So, you know, that was a little distracting. <laughs> but the dude next to her also had a weird laugh. And he laughed like this. <laughs> and all I could think was, I, I, how did they find each other? Like, what dating app was that? It's weird, huh? Yeah, thanks, man. No, <laughs> Well, let's do this. For those of you who know who I am, you know that I like to talk about my dad a lot in my act. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I like to talk about my dad a lot in my act. <laughs> and I'm just happy he's still alive. He's almost died a bunch of times. He's almost killed me a bunch of times. He loves to scare the shit out of people. That is his thing. Every day, Friday the 13th in my house. It was so stressful. I mean, you did not want to get the hiccups in my house. He loved that bunch of kids come home from school. He's like, Daddy, hey, Daddy, I think I got the hiccups, Daddy. That's the hiccups. I look at you like, you got the hiccups. What are going to do about this? Come here, buddy. I took no! You're welcome. He's like, I, po I pooped in my pants. Oh, man. I still got the hiccups. The only thing that has changed is the poop in my pants. For the rest of you who don't know um, me or don't know my act, I like to talk about my dad a lot. And this, uh, this next story I did on Netflix, and he didn't know I was going to do this. So I was texting him, give him a heads up. I was like, hey, Dad, I got this new Netflix thing coming up pretty soon. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool, huh? I go, yeah, Dad. It's really cool. I mean, I thought it was. I anyway, I'm doing a new story about you in there, Dad. He goes, oh, oh your old bread and butter, huh? Yeah, yes, I appreciate that. Well, it's a new story, Dad, about the time I found a VHS tape of yours. That's right. And he said, I'm going to kill you. 
I don't know why he's so mad. It was the happiest day of my life. It was the day me and my brother found our dad's hidden VHS porn tape. No huggy, no cussy. It was a great day, man. But look, I'll just say this about porn in general. I think today's generation spoiled rotten. I think you got it too easy with the porn now. It's a little too easy, right? There's porn everywhere you go now. You can't avoid porn anymore. Hand me a phone. I'll find porn in two seconds. I'm good at it. Go buy a laptop now. Have you done that recently? Comes with porn in it now. It's a whole new thing. You've got to go out of your way to tell them, I don't want the pre-porn porno package, please. <laughs> this is my work laptop now. <laughs> there is porn floating over our heads in an iCloud right now. <laughs> Isn't that weird? People have uploaded porn over our heads. <laughs> don't look up there. It's just a bunch of ones and zeros. But they're getting it on. <laughs> it's digital. I've seen the Matrix. <laughs> but no, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, you had to earn your porn. That's right. You had to work for it a little bit. It meant something. Like I had to befriend some kid I didn't even like. I didn't like this dude, but I knew his dad had Playboy magazines in that house. So now i got to be friends with Bradley. Ugh. I'm over at Bradley's house playing video games like, ugh, Bradley. Where's your bathroom, Bradley? Where's your bathroom? Because i got to pee, Bradley. Where's your bathroom? That's when you go look for the Playboys. Then you find one, and you slide it up the front of your shirt like that so Bradley can't see. And you walk right past Bradley to the front door. And you go, I have to go home now, Bradley. <laughs> then you run to the woods. The closest patch of woods that you can find. till you know you're by yourself, right? And you're like, okay. Well, this is perfect right here. This is where I'm going to build my jack shack. This is where this is my porn palace. I'm going to build it right here in these woods. Just me and my oasis of O faces. And that was for a Playboy magazine. So I'm trying to tell you when we found a VHS tape, that's a huge deal. Because now we're talking moving pictures. Now, my dad, I love my dad. I'm going to defend my dad, okay? He's a good Christian man. Therefore, I'm pretty sure that he was just holding this tape for a friend. <laughs> I'm not sure where he got the tape. I think he got it from a dude that he worked with. He used to work with this dude named David Sanders. That's how David talks like that. Mouth's always kind of hanging open. Always kind of leans in. Always got that hand out front pocket. <laughs> he's wide, he's wide out as hell, you know. Can't move his neck. He's like, what'd you say? <laughs> he says, hey, he says this a lot. Hey, come here, seriously. <laughs> seriously, come here. I'll tell you, yeah. Lean in here, seriously. Real quick, seriously, you got any more than Percocet? <laughs> and you, even though his mouth's open and he has a mustache, but it's a kind of mustache that just hangs over the just the mouth, just that kind. <laughs> Nothing over here, just all right here. You know, it just flies up when he talks. <laughs> you know those guys. He's like, Yo, Sammy Sam. <laughs> he's like. Half Yosemite Sam and half Wilford Brimley from that dang diabetes commercial. <laughs> Clap your hands if you've seen this commercial, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. 
All right. I'm obsessed with this commercial. I love it. I have seen the extended version online. It is amazing. And believe me, I ain't making fun of uh, diabetes. That's a serious disease. I am making fun of Wilford Brimley for pronouncing the word diabetes. Diabetes! I just don't know why he says it that way. Who's got some glasses I could borrow? I want to give you full on. Somebody give me a pair of glasses right now. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You, you, thank you, sir. I saw you. What's your name? Mike. Mike. Are you sure it took you a second? <laughs> Good to meet you, Mike. John. <laughs> thank you. Well, if you think about it, every theater needs a Mike and a John. How about that? Have you seen this commercial I'm talking about, Mike? I don't think so. No, okay. Well, you don't need to. I'm going to do it for you right now. <laughs> and I, I tell you, this is great. I've seen it. It starts off. You got Wilford Brimley. He's sitting at a breakfast table. It starts out. It's a wide shot. And as he talks, it slowly zooms in. And he's sitting there all brimbleyed up. He goes, good morning. My name is Wilford Bribley. I'd like to talk to you a minute about diabetes. I just don't know why he says it that way. By the way, Mike, what in the world is this prescription? I almost threw up when I put it on. Like, I almost puked. I was instantly drunk when I did this. This is amazing. I got to get my eyes checked now. Oh, this is great. This is, you probably never get sick because you can see diseases floating in the air. There goes typhoid right there. There's typhoid. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I appreciate it. Here you go. Follow the sound of my voice. Thank you, Mike. You're a good sport, buddy. He's a good dad, man. I'm just happy he's still alive. Yeah, he's hanging in there, man. Old popsicle. You can't kill him. Can't be done. He's almost died a bunch of times. Like a lot of times. I could do another hour on how many times he's almost died. I think one of my favorite times... He's alive. <laughs> I had to mow the grass when I was a kid. That was my job. In between our yard and our neighbor's yard, we had these railroad ties that separated our yards. Yeah, y'all, I know y'all know what railroad ties are. Some people don't know, I have to tell them. It's a square log, stupid. I don't know why they were there. We had eight of them right in a row. I guess he thought the Polar Express might be coming for <laughs> All I know was I had to edge up against these logs, right? So I'm out there, I'm edging. I'm edging, you know. This is how I edge. I go like that. <laughs> so I'm just edging. And all of a sudden, I see a bunch of bees just hanging out on this one log. I was like, screw that. <laughs> Skip that log. Finish the rest of the yard. Go in and tell Dad I'm done, which is a mistake. Right? As soon as you tell your dad you're done with the job, what do he do? Yeah. That's my dad. He goes, oh, let's take a looky-looky out here. <laughs> you finished already? That was fast. Okay. What's this right here? That one right there? That, the one with the grass coming out of it. <laughs> Mr. Spot, didn't you? I was like, Daddy, I think there's a bee's nest under that log. He goes, bee's nest? <laughs> bee's nest? Are you going to go with that one? Bee's nest. You think I'm stupid, son? Bees live in trees. He said those words. Like he, he rhymed it. Bees live in trees. 
And then he took the lawnmower, kicked the log over, went, <laughs> mowed over where the log was. And well, it was a wasp nest in the ground. They can do that. Google it. I think he thought if he put the lawnmower on top of that nest, then all those bees would get magically sucked into the bag on the side of the lawnmower. Right? But bees don't work like that. They're not very cooperative. Bees are crafty some bitches. It was about five seconds. He had a cloud of 500 bees hovering his head, which is now a honeycomb. You can't see. He's swatting bees. He's trying to punch bees out of the sky. He's running uphill in a zigzag pattern. I said, Dad, that's for alligators, not bees. <laughs> Lawnmower's going downhill by itself. He's taking out the neighbor's bushes. And here's the kicker. We have a swimming pool that he could have jumped in for a second to get the bees off of him. He ran past the pool. When I say past the pool, I mean next to it long ways. It was there. He was here. He ran past the pool and he got in his truck and he drove off. He got the hell out of there. I mean, he floored it. He did a donut gone. Gone for two hours. No cell phones back then. He couldn't call him. He just left. He didn't know if he's coming back. He came back two hours later. And we was worried about him. He came back, man. His face was red and puffy. It looked like a dodgeball with a chicken pox. I was like, Daddy, what happened? Are you okay, Daddy? What happened? Because I tell you what happened. I had bees on me, dumbass. What do you think happened? I lost it. I flipped out. I just took off running. I had bees on me. I couldn't see. Ran past a dang pool. I saw my truck. I just got my truck. When I was in there, I was like, well, might as well go to the grocery store. Like, he went shopping. <laughs> what a weirdo. I used to live in Los Angeles. I moved back home because my dad had a stroke. And he is now paralyzed on his left side. And my mom has never lived by herself. She's 73. She's got brittle bones and glaucoma. And uh, so now I live with her, taking care of mom. And uh, then a pandemic happens, and I can't even tour. So I can't tell people that I'm a comedian. I, I can tell them I'm an elder care Uber driver. <laughs> that seems to be my new job these days. But me and mom, we're pretty good roommates. We get along. It's weird living with my mom, though. She has a recliner. I have a recliner. We just watch TV together. And... We like to watch stuff with numbers in it. You know, 60 minutes, 20, 20, 48 hours. You know, 600 pound life. You know. She likes murder. I've just re recently realized she likes watching murder stuff, and I didn't know that about her. She's a sweet Southern Baptist lady. I've never heard her cuss in my life, but she loves watching people die. You know, one day we're, she had the remote and uh, we were watching Netflix and she picked this out a little show called The Tiger King <laughs> best thing I've ever seen in my life by the way I love that that's hilarious but we didn't know about it no one had talked about it yet it wasn't a big deal yet and she's like oh look at this Tiger King I like, I like tigers I bet this is like a spinoff of The Lion King a good wholesome Disney thing we can, we can watch together as a family. Way off! We watched that first episode. We didn't say a word. Like it was dead quiet in there. And it was over. And I looked over at my mom. And she looked over at me. And she said, 
we're gonna watch all of these. <laughs> I think we are. I love her too. I call her Mimosa. I call my mom Mimosa and my dad's Popsicle. I would like to see a, a Disney spinoff of uh, Tiger King. I wonder what they would do with that. You know? Maybe Carol Baskins walks out and has the head of her dead husband out like this. She walks out like seven. Yeah, I went to the doctor. I don't know if you've been to the doctor lately, but I went to the doctor for the first time in 10 years. I was scared to death. You can't live like this for 10 years. I knew it was going to be bad news. I knew something was up. I figured I'd walk in and the doctor would be waiting on me. Like, oh, well, look who it is. <laughs> is that John Reap? Okay, let's see if I got you in here. Well, oh. oh, there you are. You got three days to live. <laughs> so I was just like, I was nervous, you know. I was like, hey, man, it's been a while. You know, why don't you just test me for everything? <laughs> you know? Yeah, whatever test you have in this building... Let's just go ahead and take that test three times today. Let's take all the tests today. You got a test back there called the Charlie Sheen. Let's go ahead and take that test. Let's be safe. Let's know everything. And my doctor, he does have a good sense of humor. He's like, <laughs> Charlie Sheen. Okay. We could do that. Yeah, we'll get your blood work done. We'll do an EKG. We'll do a prostate exam. I was like, yep, okay, here it comes. Uh, prostate exam, sounds important. Put that on the calendar. I will definitely uh, come back for that for sure. Because <laughs> in my brain, that was a juice cleanse. I go home for three days, drink fluids, then come back. That's a whole nother test, by the way. He goes, no, 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 we're going to do it today. We'll do it today. We'll just knock it out today. <laughs> I was like... We're going to knock it out. <laughs> and I'm a comedian. I've heard all the prostate exam jokes over the years. All right, the joke is the guy always has to bend over. And the doctor went right to business. He didn't even buy me dinner first. There was no foreplay. I felt three hands. That was weird. <laughs> so all these old 80s hacky jokes are going through my brain. <laughs> And I'm like, shit, it's my turn. <laughs> and here's the thing. I knew that this day was coming. I just didn't know it's going to be this day. <laughs> and my doctor could tell I was nervous. He's like, John, calm down. It's not a big deal. Calm down. And this is where he threw me a curveball. I wasn't ready for this. It's real simple, John. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bring your knees to your chest. <laughs> lay over on your side. Pull your underwear down. And we'll just knock it out. <laughs> Couple things real quick. Well, number one, I physically cannot do what you just said. I can't do that. My knees have never touched my chest. Ain't happening today. Number two, hold up, we spooning in here? Are you about to cuddle me? Whisper sweet nothings? I was like, whatever, he's a doctor. He knows what he's doing. So I just did the best that I could. I was like, all right, well, hang on now. Let's see what I can do there. Let's see, ah, maybe if I rock with it. I get some momentum going here. <laughs> okay. And it happened so fast. It was over like that. He just goes, hang it, hang it. You're good. It was that quick. He said, You're good. Perfect prospect. It was I mean it was that fast. I mean, he didn't make that noise. <laughs> he didn't say, ah, gah, gah, gah. 
I just did that to illustrate how quick it happened. It's very fast. Just boom, boom. And he goes, perfect prostrate. You're good. Perfect prostrate. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, good deal. Wow. That was fast. That was real quick. Wow. That was real, that was real fast. And I started thinking, well, how could he possibly know that? I mean, think about it. In the amount of time that this man was inside of my anus, I'm thinking there is no possible way that he could have ascertained this information. So now I'm thinking, you know what? He probably hates this part of his job. He wants it over with. I don't blame him. I do too. But if that's, if that's the case, well, then that means he's not doing his job properly. And now he's wasting my time. He's wasting my money. I only come here once every damn 10 years. This dude's trying to shortchange my ass. I start to get pissed off at him. Oh, well, uh, uh, that's it? That, that, that's all you do? Oh, hell no. You get your ass back in my ass. Get your ass back in there. Come on, let's knock it out. But I trust him. You had that done yet, 37-year-old dude? It's coming. I'll do them at the end of the show if you need one. I got you. Safety first. And then he goes, uh, he goes, we should do a stool sample. I was like, all right. Keep that glove. <laughs> I thought that'd be real easy, stool sample. I thought that would be like, I leave a deposit there for him, you know, somewhere in his office. <laughs> right? I don't tell him, I hide it. <laughs> He'd find it eventually. And then he could call me up and be like, hey, uh, good news. I found it, and uh, no worms. I don't know what they're looking for. That's not how that works now. You know what they do now? They give you a take-home kit. That's right, they make you do it. Has anybody done this? It's crazy. You get a box, right? Okay, good, I see a couple hands. It's true, you can back me up on this. You get a box, right? There's Cola Guard, that's one of them. You get this box and you open it up and there's instructions in there what they want you to do, right? They got a chart in there, right? They got gloves and there's, and I swear, I swear to God, there is a paintbrush in there. <laughs> it's a paintbrush because they don't need a whole lot of the sample, see? They just need a little, da little dabble, do you? That's all they need. <laughs> Right? They got microscopes now. They don't need a whole lot of it. You don't get a butter knife is my point. It's a little dabble, do ya? But that, that's weird because now you, uh, you find yourself in your own place, right? You've got, they give you gloves. I mentioned that. You've got, you got gloves. I'm like, it's me. I'm cool with me. But, but now I'm sitting there. I've scrubbed up. I've got these gloves. Yeah, I've went. We've got this stupid chart in this hand, stupid paintbrush in this hand. And they make you, you're like, oh my God. Uh, it's like you're doing paint by numbers. Like, oh, oh. All number twos, of course. I was getting angry again that I'm having to do this. I was already in his office. And now I'm having to do this. I was getting mad again. You know, I was like, dear doctor. And then you mail it. You put it in an envelope. And you mail it. Isn't that great? You mail your poop. You sell these UPS vans out here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what Brown does for you. That's what they do, do. He just loves to scare the crap out of people. That's my dad's thing. Every day, Friday 13th in my house. <laughs> you do not want to get the hiccups in my house. He loved that. 
come home from school. Hey, daddy, uh, daddy, I think I got the hiccups. <laughs> yeah, I got the hiccups. He goes, you got the hiccups? <laughs> oh, buddy. Come here, I'll take it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I pooped in my pants. <laughs> uh, I still got the hiccups. <laughs> the only thing that has changed is the poop in my pants. <laughs> I'm scared the shit out of you. Man, this next story, this might be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I was in the eighth grade, came home from church one Sunday afternoon with my family, and I just go straight to the bathroom. While I'm in the bathroom, my dad sneaks off to my room, and he hides in my closet. Just because he wanted to scare me when I went in there. It was innocent, but I don't know he's in my closet. I don't have this information. I go to my room. I shut my door. I walk up to my mirror. I'm checking me out in the mirror. I was, you know, I was posing for myself. I was going through puberty. I was just looking at myself. I started taking my Sunday school clothes off. I had a jam box on my dresser. I turned my jam box on. And it was uh, Prince. I know. And he was singing when doves cry. Now, I know it might sound weird to some of y'all coming from this accent. But I love me some damn Prince. <laughs> that guy was good. One of the best guitar players of all time. And I'm at the age, I happened to see the movie Purple Rain in the theater when it came out. I was there on a date. That was the first time I French kissed a girl and touched a titty. That song meant something to me. <laughs> so I'm going through that. I'm just taking my clothes off. I'm looking at me and I'm starting singing the song to myself. Like, I'm looking at my own image. I'm going, dig if you will, that picture. <laughs> of you and I engaged in the gas. Sweat of your body. Kind of... <laughs> like, I'm getting sexy for myself. <laughs> I was making eye contact with me. I was getting emotional. I almost started crying. <laughs> I sang the whole song to myself like that. Stripping the whole way. I get all the way down to my tidy whities and my black socks. Like Tom Cruise from Risky Business. If Tom Cruise looked like a 13-year-old horny orphan Annie, that's why. I was smaller, skinnier, had curly hair. Now I'm done singing. I've got my suit on the hanger. See, I'm a good boy. I'm going to go hang my suit up in that closet. Just like my daddy taught me. Now this whole time in that closet, my poor dad. My poor, poor dad. This whole time from the shutters has accidentally watched this whole thing. He didn't want to see that. He didn't know I was going to do that. He was hoping that I would forget to hang the suit up for once. And I would have left the room and he could have snuck out later. He felt embarrassed for me. <laughs> he actually told me later in life, he goes, I'll never forget that shit. <laughs> but he can't move. Because I'm a good boy. I'm going to go hang my suit up in that closet. Just like my daddy taught me. I walk over to that closet. I open the closet doors. And he's just standing there. <laughs> but, like he's been, he's, been, he's been waiting for it. He knew it was coming. He's, he's standing there like this. He goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you doing in there? How long have you been in here? <laughs> this is what it looks like when your son cries. 
I'll tell you the time I got my ass whipped, like big time. I was in the seventh grade. I count it. That's, that's still, I got hurt pretty bad. I was taking karate classes. <laughs> See that? That's karate. <laughs> and that is why I got my ass whipped. <laughs> Shit don't work. It's <laughs> taking karate classes. I got the orange belt, which for a ginger, that's like a black belt, really. <laughs> got the orange belt. I was going through a ninja phase. I loved all things ninja. I loved ninja books. I loved ninja magazines, ninja movies. So I was taking all these karate classes. I got the orange belt like, I know everything. I mean, I love the ninja throwing stars, the nunchuckers. You know the nunchuckers? Y'all know the nunchuckers? Yakinville don't have nunchuckers? Nunchuckers, that's where you hit yourself in the balls a bunch of times. You got to toughen them up. I had the nunchuckers, I had the tabai boots. You know the tabai boots? That's where the big toe is separated from the rest of the foot. That's the thing. That's the real thing. I don't know why. That's like maybe you could flee on a fence. <laughs> Clothesline, laundry's dry. I had all that stuff. <laughs> But this particular ass whipping story <laughs> happened to take place during Easter time. And I was spending the night at my buddy Danny's house. My buddy Danny, he was a ninja too. <laughs> he was a yellow belt, not as good as me, but I liked it. <laughs> and when you're a ninja, you get missions. Yeah, you get missions. It's in the magazine, you get them. <laughs> and our mission that night. <laughs> was to sneak out of the house and go into the other neighborhood and destroy and assassinate all of the inflatable bunny rabbits that people put in their front yards for Easter. We deserve this ass whipping. We're stupid little vandals. But it was fun at the time. You put your ninja stuff on. You'd be hiding behind a tree. Put your mask like that. You see a bunny in somebody's front yard. Danny, here goes one right there, Danny. Give it, give it, give me that blow dart. It's my turn, Danny. This one's mine. And you just, you just see this bunny go. He killed like eight of them. And we stole them, we kidnapped them. We, we took them. Then we just ran and hid in the woods until the coast was clear. Yeah, came out like 10 minutes later. You know, just looking around. Got this deflated bunny rabbit in my hand. Just walking around. I look across the street and I see five shadowy figures running towards me. I was like, oh, I thought it was my buddy Eric Trivet who lived in that neighborhood. Eric was a ninja too. He was supposed to come out that night, but he was grounded. But I thought it was Eric. So I was like, Eric! Look! We killed this bunny! But it wasn't Eric Trivet. It was five middle-aged men running across the street to whip my ass. And they didn't know how young I was. It was dark out. You know, I was this tall. I had a mask on. They didn't know I was beating up a kid. And this one dude leading the charge, he's like the youngest one. He's pissed off. Like, he's running, and he's running his mouth. I just see him, I'm going to break the damn thing for you, I'm just staring at him. We're getting close. Oh, my God, they did you. I couldn't see. You know, here he comes. This dude climbs a fence. He jumps off the fence. He does a flying burrito on Danny. And he knocks over Danny, catches him at the last minute by the back of the head, and took his head to the fence. Went, Pow! He just knocked him out right in front of me. Knocked him out cold. I saw that happen. <laughs> he just knocked out like, Danny, are you going to wait? Now they're circling me. 
I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a second. You're, you're not there. Just take it easy. Whoa, whoa, Danny, you okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This guy's like, what neighborhood are you from, big guy? <laughs> and it happened so fast. Like, I was just in shock. I was just answering his questions. You know? I was like, well, I'm not from this neighborhood, sir. <laughs> this dude's beating the crap out of me. And then he grabs my head, puts me in a headlock where my body's in front of him. And he's twisted and turning like this. <laughs> Do like that. <laughs> like he's, he's trying to break my neck. He's trying to kill me. I'm in his headlock going like, oh my God. He, he really likes that bunny. <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't want to die. And at some point, I don't care who you are, you do something so that you don't die. Right? You do something so you will just keep on the living. It's called fight or flight. I did both at the same time. Because it's possible. Because in one motion, I dropped to one knee, which is the flight, but I also uppercutted, and that's a fight, and I got him right in the balls. <laughs> I think he had three balls. And one big ball. I got all ball. I went, boom! And he went, ah! And he just dropped me, and then I ran for my life. I ran for my life. I was wind sprinting. See that? That's how you wind sprint. See that? You make a knife out of your hand. And you cut the wind in half. You see people run like that with a closed fist? Too much wind resistance. That's rookie shit. Do you want to live? Or do you want to die? But I don't expect y'all to know that because that's orange belt, third degree ginger ninja shit. I know that. I ran for my life. Bye, Danny. Left him laying there. I was gone. Now I'm hiding behind the house. I'm back there crying. <laughs> my face is all bloody. My eyes were swollen shut. I just started thinking to myself, I, I gotta go find Danny. <laughs> I hope Danny's okay. So I'm tiptoeing back down to the scene of the crime. I'm scared to death, though. I'm going, Daddy! Hey, Daddy! Here comes Danny. Out of nowhere. And he's walking just like this. I saw his whole face. It was a bright moon that night. He had his ninja mask in his hand. I was like, hey, Danny! Oh, my God. Thank God you're okay, man. I thought you was dead. Are you okay, Danny? Are you okay? He goes, yeah, I'm fine. Because I was just faking it. <laughs> Can I come again? I, I didn't hear that last part, Danny. There's a lot of blood in my ears right now. What did you say at the end? He said, I'm fine, dude. I was just pretending to be dead. I was just laying there. I was just faking it. So, so what that means is Danny laid there in the dark, just pretending to be dead, probably looking at me every now and then like, <laughs> just, just watching me take the ass whipping of a lifetime. And then he made fun of me. He goes, of course I fell down. Of course I was faking it. Why didn't you fall down, stupid? <laughs> I don't know, Daddy. I didn't know I was allowed to do that. I guess I haven't learned the ways of the possum. <laughs> so me and Danny don't talk anymore. <laughs> right well if you like that why don't you check out some other videos right here on my channel and while you're at it you can like it subscribe
subscribe and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you.